Power management is an important but often overlooked aspect of setting up a ship. While not an essential skill in the early game, an understanding of it allows commanders to tap an extra level of performance normally unavailable without it. Power management also increases the resilience of ships to incoming damage, and can save your life in bad situations. Power management takes two basic forms, manual and automatic. Both are managed from the modules tab of your systems panel on the right side of your cockpit. Manual power management is accomplished by selecting and shutting down modules that aren't needed. This is more time-consuming, but is the better solution when building a ship that will be permanently underpowered. Automatic power management is a primarily combat-focused system and governs what modules are deactivated when a power shortage occurs on a given ship. This form of power management is actually the more complicated of the two, so we will cover it first since even a well-balanced ship build is vulnerable to power shortages, with the most common cause being damage to a ship's power plant. I have not found any consistent documentation on the variability of reactor malfunction effects, with different sources online and on the forums disagreeing about how and when some minor malfunctions occur. There are fewer disagreements about the major malfunction sources. Power plant malfunctions can begin randomly once the module reaches 80% integrity. As with other modules, these malfunctions can reduce reactor output to as little as 40% temporarily. The experimental effect scramble spectrum, most commonly observed on pulse lasers, can also trigger a malfunction at any integrity level. When scrambled, your power plant output will crash to 40% capacity and then recover after a few seconds. Coriolis actually marks this threshold on your power meter. The 40% bar turns red if your build is vulnerable to a 40% reactor crash, meaning that having your reactor scrambled will shut down your whole ship. This is definitely something to be avoided for combat and trade ships, since targeting the power plant on both ship types is a common strategy. Should your power plant be reduced to 0% integrity, there will be a crash in reactor output. Again, the limit here is 40%, with an eventual recovery to 50% after a few seconds. Your reactor will not recover above this threshold without a visit to the nearest repair bay. Any damage received by a reactor at 0% has a random roll chance to blow up your whole ship, without regard to hull or shield integrity. Automatic power management is purpose-built to handle these malfunctions, but takes some forethought to set up. This system is controlled through a small priority field assigned to each individual module. The priority field is only active for systems that draw power and that can be disabled. Things like the power plant itself, cockpit canopy, and non-guardian reinforcement packages don't have an active priority field and can be ignored. Module priority is rated up to a maximum of 5, where a higher number indicates a lower priority module. This means that systems with a priority rating of 5 are considered less important than systems with a priority rating of 4. In the event a power shortage occurs, all modules in the lowest priority group are disabled, so modules with a priority of 5 are turned off, followed by priority 4, and then 3, on until you hit priority 1. There is an issue with this system in that it will not let you set any module more than one unit lower than the current lowest, meaning that if you don't have any modules defined, you can only set priority to a maximum of two. After at least one module is set to priority two, then priority three becomes available on until you hit priority five. Note that all modules in a priority group are disabled, even if the power shortage is smaller than the draw of the entire group. The more groups you have defined, the less impact that each individual priority group will have on ship performance. Commanders are free to organize these priorities however they wish. Automatic power management is most important to combat pilots and traders, who will find themselves under fire on a regular basis. It adds multiple layers of redundancy to ships so that damage to your reactor won't immediately kill all onboard systems while also allowing for ships to squeeze a little more capacity out of their reactor systems by funneling power away 
from non-critical systems automatically during combat. Pilots can leverage power priority to drive weapons that would otherwise not work by turning off systems they believe are non-critical for offensive actions. Things like the FSD, cargo hatch, AFMU, or SRV bays can be set so that they turn off when hardpoints are deployed. Doing this frees up a little bit more power, though it does make escape more complicated since your frameshift drive will need to reboot before it can spool for a jump. A good practice among combat and trade pilots is to have modules that you will notice set to turn off at specific points in the priority tree. For example, a few of my combat ships have their smallest hard points set to turn off at priority 3. If I see them go down, it lets me know that my reactor is taking risky amounts of damage and that I should consider retreat. This can be done with utility mounts, scanners, sensors, or anything you think is semi-critical. There is a lot of flexibility in the way power priority can be defined, but within this flexibility are some principles that can be followed to ensure maximum survivability. Traders, for example, should always have their frameshift drive and thrusters on different priority groups, with the frameshift drive at priority 1. While this sounds counterintuitive, remember that your frameshift drive has a minimum reboot time after a shutdown, in addition to its spooling time. Should you lose power during an escape, you have to add both time requirements together to get your total time to jump, and it's a potentially devastating delay. Thrusters, on the other hand, reboot instantly. Separating the two, and leveraging flight assist off during evasive maneuvering, means that, should you lose power, your ship will tumble away while your frameshift drive continues to spool, often meaning that as soon as power is restored, you are ready to align and jump. Ships with shield generators should have the generator and any shield boosters on different priority groups, with the shield being given higher priority than the boosters. If your shields don't collapse, then this won't harm anything. But if they do, it ensures that your shield generator is able to continue rebuilding collapsed defenses even if the reactor is damaged, potentially allowing base shielding to be rebuilt a little bit faster. Manual power management requires less forethought, but more attention overall, because you have to make adjustments in your module tab every time something needs to change, as opposed to the priority sets, which are enacted instantly if problems develop. The most common application for manual power management is in the construction of exploration ships, where it allows commanders to undersize their reactors, reducing weight in order to further increase jump range. It's possible to run an anaconda on a two-way reactor with a little engineering and aggressive manual power management. Things like vehicle bays, AFMs, shield generators, limpet controllers, and your cargo hatch are not always needed. These can be safely turned off and left off for extended periods of time where they are only enabled when needed. Manual power management can be extremely powerful, but has the downside of being a hands-on process that takes your eyes off your surroundings and requires time to set or reset when an adjustment is needed. For example, explorers commonly disable their shields when traveling far from civilization, only switching them on when landing on a planet or exploring a potentially hazardous anomaly. Rover bays and fighter hangars are likewise left off until the specific moment where they are of use. This keeps underpowered ships well within their power limits and prevents emergency alerts from being needlessly tossed up during long trips. This has the added benefit of reducing heat and reserve fuel consumption, helping to prevent an overheat during fuel scoop operations, and providing a slight increase to base fuel economy, a fact that is useful should you ever run out of fuel, buying extra time for a fuel rat to find and service your ship. Manual power management also helps maintain stealth, Reducing the thermal load on your ship increases the amount of time that it can spend silent running before an overheat starts occurring. It also allows ships to run multiple redundant modules, like dual AFMU or dual shield cell banks, where only a single module is active at a time and then deactivated when expended or not in use. Manual power management touches all aspects of the game, with its importance varying greatly depending on application. It's a useful skill to understand, 
and one which all commanders should experiment with. Automatic power management remains a critical system that should be planned in advance and well thought out. Coriolis can assist in laying out power priorities and show the impact of both methods by simulating the effects of different modules being turned on or off. For best results, ensure that the 40% indicator is colored blue before implementing your priority settings in-game. If you can't get a priority stack that turns this indicator blue, you may need to revisit your module selection and make some adjustments to your ship build. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.